And uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, great to be here. Um, and thank you very much for the opportunity to talk a little bit about Avalon. Uh, the Avalon 2.0 story I really is the, is the title. And uh, if things work, uh, there we go. Um, I will um, talk to you today about building Ontario's first vertically integrated lithium uh, supply chain. And I guess I'd like to start off with really the comment, what, do you, what a difference a year makes. You know, last year, uh, Avalon was here on the stage at uh, the CENCAN Expo talking about the potential uh, for developing our portfolio of assets led by our unique, uh, very uh, valuable and rare uh, petalite deposit at Separation Rapids. We were talking about the, cre um, the strategy to create vertically integrated lithium supply chain and talking about filling in the midstream gap and building a bridge between the rich lithium resources of Ontario's north with the industrial and manufacturing markets and customers in the south. And over the last 12 months, and specifically the last three, uh, we've stopped talking because we're actually now doing. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Jim Jakes. I am the Chief Administrative Officer for Avalon Advanced Materials, um, a company that's been in business for over 25 years, and I think many of you, I hope, are familiar with us. Uh, one of my key messages today is to introduce you to the new Avalon 2.0 a refreshed and reinvigorated company with a passionate mission to actually build a vertically integrated lithium supply chain in Ontario for Ontario. The epicenter of our strategy is of course here in Thunder Bay where we now are a first mover and in the early stages of planning to build Ontario's first lithium hydroxide conversion facility. Something that will create hundreds of jobs, uh, direct and indirect and other economic benefits as well as ensure the road to a clean, secure, and lower carbon energy future that runs through this province and indeed through Canada. Because we're a public company, I need to uh, state that my presentation today um, contains forward-looking information. Forward-looking information is subject to known and unknown risks and other factors that may cause actual results to be materially different than those expressed or implied. If you'd like a copy of our forward-looking statement disclaimer, it's on our website, and or I can give you a copy afterwards. That's enough of the lawyers. As I mentioned, Avalon has a well-established history in the Canadian critical minerals industry, having amassed a strong portfolio of petalite and spodumene lithium deposits in Ontario, and heavy rare earths and zirconium deposits in the Northwest Territories. Under our founding management, Avalon existed for many years in the same model as many junior miners, discovering and accumulating deposits in the hopes of one day bringing them to production. Well, at Avalon, we're now turning that hope into real action. Avalon 2.0 is highly focused on commercializing our assets and maximizing our market potential in the North American, as the North American demand for lithium and other critical minerals continues to grow exponentially. To ensure we accomplish that, the company has made significant changes and upgrades to its management and board. This past May, Scott Monteith was appointed as Avalon's new CEO. His career background is commercializing clean energy and wastewater treatment technologies, as well as uh, legacy of creating value through multiple M&A transactions. Uh, I was privileged to join Avalon in June um, with a background in strategic consulting, partnership building, and industry experience in telecom and banking. And I had a stint as the president of Northwest Mobility, which was Bell's wireless subsidiary in the Northwest of Canada. Scott and I have joined together with two other recent executive additions, being Ricardo Olahorsky, a veteran Canadian metallurgical expert and mine developer, and Zeeshan Syed, Avalon's president. And the four of us combined uh, make a dynamic and a diversified new management team. Our board of directors has also similarly been strengthened including most recently Jan Holland, Alec Kadatsky, and Benny Locks, who was just appointed to the board as the representative of our new, of our new joint venture partner and largest shareholder, Sabelco, who is a world leader in materials solutions, especially in the glass and ceramics business based in Belgium. The new Avalon 2.0 executive team and refreshed board possess deep expertise now in resource development, commercializing assets, capital markets, and finance ushering in a new era of commercial action and growth activity for the company. And it's, an, and it's intended to unlock real value for our shareholders, 
while simultaneously answering the call from policymakers to help build and deliver the critical minerals strategies at both the federal and provincial level. Our new executive team has moved quickly to put the pieces in place that will see Avalon move forward with plans to build a world-class lithium processing facility right here in Thunder Bay, and therefore to complete Ontario's first vertically integrated, vertically integrated supply chain for the EV battery market. On the mining resource side, we secured a $63 million investment in Ontario from Sabelco to both bring our Ontario lithium assets, such as Separation Rapids and Lilypad, into production, and also to acquire new mineral assets as well. In quick succession to that major deal, we acquired a 383-acre industrial property off of Strathcona Avenue here in Thunder Bay. And we will process hydroxide there for the Canadian and North American EV vehicle and fleets for the decades ahead. Importantly, as part of that midstream strategy, also announced, um, Avalon also announced another key partnership with Metso Corporation of Finland to bring Europe's, uh, that European company's proven and world's best practice lithium conversion technology to Canada. It's an exciting time and we're just getting started. These developments and strategic goals are to serve our core mission, closing the midstream supply gap. As I go tangential, we hear a lot about the um, lithium battery factories in Windsor, Stellantis plant, we hear about the plant in uh, St. Thomas for Volkswagen, but no one ever talks about where the supply of that lithium is going to come from. We'd like it to come from Ontario. It should come from Ontario. It should be refined in Ontario. It should be sold and used in Ontario. And that's what we're all about. I like that. That deserves a clap. Thank you, sir. Um, however, however, there's an even higher cause uh, that our mission uh, actually addresses, and, and it has to do with replacing what has been an offshore, outsourced, and increasingly precarious dependency on foreign supply chains with a new and, of course, now onshored domestic Ontario-based solution. Many, if not most, of North America's, indeed the world's, lithium battery producers currently rely on China for the refining capacity required to produce commercial-grade lithium hydroxide. It's no secret that the geopolitical ground is shifting and that both Canada and Ontario recognize the need for a rapid strategic shift towards onshoring and the establishment of secure domestic critical mineral supply chains that represent the foundation of a true low carbon future. What we're effectively talking about is moving from a high risk and it should be added high carbon global supply chain as you can see on the screen Right, to one uh, you know, that includes, or from one that ships rocks back and forth from China, from Australia, right, to one that's a more sustainable, domestic, lower carbon footprint chain right here in Ontario. So the vision we plan to make into reality is to build a stable, secure, and long-term supply chain of lithium that's mined in Ontario, refined in Ontario, and again, used in Ontario and to get aligned with the economic and strategic forces now unfolding with respect to the onshoring of all critical minerals, lithium and all others. This is sometimes referred to as building Fortress North America, which we eagerly support. Avalon's first step in actualizing this vertically integrated strategy has been to create a joint venture mining partnership with Sabelco and get our separation rapids finally up and into production as soon as possible. It's located 70 kilometers north of Kenora, uh, and we recently announced a mineral resource estimate um, update that revealed a 10 million ton resource of um, measured and inferred lithium, petalite, at 1.35%, which was importantly a 20% increase uh, compared to previous reports. And moreover, the deposit seems sizable in depth, for which further drilling plans are currently now underway. We already have some of the infrastructure in place as well in terms of road and power and our target date is early 2026 to get this one underway and commencement of production. For more information on this very special deposit you can uh, refer yourself to our website because I don't want to run over time. The next linchpin of our vision uh, in this supply chain building is of course uh, an ESG forward facility here on the outskirts of Thunder Bay. 
um, really furthering a long and successful tr tradition of Thunder Bay as a regional industrial leader. Avalon will continue and indeed build on that long established industry history of Thunder Bay with the construction of a world-class and best practice lithium conversion facility on an old vacant um, paper mill site that already has uh, water, power, sewer, and gas services, and is also accessible by road, uh, by rail, and we have our own deep water port on the property as well. Um, it, you really couldn't uh, get a better head start um, than, um, than this property. Uh, large area, 383 acres, fully zoned industrial, been vacant for many, many years, an asset for the people and the economy of Thunder Bay to truly take advantage of. Our processing facility will also leverage the clean, leading edge processing solutions delivered and uh, invented by the Mezzo Corporation, which is already working on other North American lithium conversion projects, such as the Piedmont facility in Tennessee, uh, and it's already using proven technology there uh, and operations from other places like Germany, where they have the highest standards of environmental protection and sustainability. As I've alluded to, um, Avalon 2's vision is more than um, our specific economic agenda. It's about securing Northwestern Ontario and more specifically Thunder Bay's economic future. The required talent, services and workforce, educational institutions and youth are already here. Importantly, we envision our Avalon processing facility serving as a regional hub, accepting feedstock not only from our own mines and towns, but from other regional lithium producers as well. Our plans at Strathcona specifically call for two parallel and simultaneous uh, production lines, one to process spodumene and one to produce petalite. Importantly, having the world's best practice lithium processing uh, facility will also be a strong catalyst for other regional junior miners to attract the necessary capital that they need to bring their own deposits into production. Obviously, the funding requirement for this vision of a domestic vertically integrated supply chain is going to be significant. We are carefully examining the total capex required for the Strathcona project and will soon be starting our feasibility study work. Our model is most certainly um, um, going to favor finding other new joint venture partners like we did on our mining side with Sabelco, right? We'll also, of course, be tapping into available capital markets and government grants and loans. And um, I think that given that we are a, uh, I think we put ourselves up as a perfect partner uh, for provincial and federal um, support, given that we are, you know, a, a perfect poster child of the critical mineral strategy that is so necessary for Canada and for Ontario. Our target date for operations at Strathcona um, is late 2027, again, dis depending on the necessary and essential permitting and consultations. The economic potential we see from constructing this midstream processing portion of our Ontario lithium supply chain will be significant. Upwards of 500 jobs in Thunder Bay and Kenora, including roles in science, engineering, technology, and industrial operations. We'll also be stimulating the economy of Thunder Bay and region by creating a regional processing resource for other mineral suppliers to use. And importantly, as we've already done, attracting significant and new foreign investment and new capital to Northwestern Ontario. According to the International Energy Authority, by 2030, an estimated 220,000 new North American jobs will be created by the zero emission vehicle market in mining, processing, and manufacturing. To end the end-to-end the end -end vertically integrated supply chain at Avalon will help germinate commercial enterprises and economic growth in all three of those subsectors, mining, processing, and manufacturing, right here in Ontario. In our view, it's hard to overstate the economic and long-term benefits. <clears throat> so a significant part of my message here today is to let everybody know, in this room, in the market, in, and the officials in the public domain, that we are open for business. Uh, we are open to proacti proactively looking to enter into new productive partnerships with parties who share our vision and goals across every stage of building an Ontario lithium supply chain. From upstream agreements 
to collaborating on our midstream production facility here in Thunder Bay, to having downstream customers and partners join us in setting the spec for our battery grade lithium and even to the recovery and recycling stages downstream. <clears throat> It's important that I also state our company's deep commitment to establishing new and durable partnerships with Indigenous communities, uh, those that live um, within and near our operating footprint. Our senior management team has recently completed the first three weeks of an intense eight-week Indigenous cultural safety training program through the respected Sanyas organization called Core Foundations, and I'd recommend everybody have a look at it and take it. Our goal is to proactively educate ourselves to be better listeners, and to learn how to be legitimate participants in reconciliation. We are also in the process of developing a land acknowledgement, soon to be published and adopted across our operations. These actions are all key, but only just the first steps that we will take in order to fulfill and exceed our consultation responsibilities. The success of Avalon's critical minerals development and vertical integration strategy is tied to the active participation of Indigenous peoples, and we will be achieved uh, and will be achieved by integrating their worldview perspective through ongoing engagement, collaboration and benefit sharing as outlined in both the federal and provincial government critical mineral papers. Here in Thunder Bay, we are also pursuing and looking forward to building educational partnerships with Confederation College with, and with Lakehead University. Many of the local professional uh, services that we've already hired related to our Strathcona property are all graduates of both of these fine institutions. As a new and long-term stakeholder in this community, we are committed to furthering uh, the research and development capabilities of these institutions and how that can be brought to bear with respect to responsible, sustainable development of Northwestern Ontario's critical minerals. So a year ago it was talk, this year it's a story of action. One year from now, our goal will be to be on this stage here again, providing you with a step-by-step -step update on how Avalon is advancing each of the strategic goals and projects we've outlined here, to demonstrate how we are creating real and large-scale economic value at the national and provincial and community level, while facilitating and securing Ontario's green energy future. We intend to show, not tell you, exactly the difference that one year can make. Thank you very much.